Several months ago, I reviewed the third book in Legend of the Galactic Heroes. After, after a significant delay, it's time to get around to book number four. Previously, in Legend of the Galactic Heroes, with the resolution of both the Free Planets Alliance and Galactic Empire's respective civil war, the attention of the Empire once again turns to conquest of the Alliance, and with it the problem of Isolone Fortress, a fortress which had only been taken by one person, Yang Wen Li, who was currently in command of it, and he did it through deception, trickery, and exploitation of the internal divisions deliberately set within the fortress's defenders by the Imperial High Command, divisions that Yang tr Yang's troops don't have. Reinhard von Lohengram, regent of the Empire, is pitched a cutting plan. Install a hyperdrive on Gaysburg Fortress, which has a similar design to Iser Lawn, and send it and a fleet to attack Iser Lawn. If the fortress cannot be captured, they could destroy it and park Gaysburg in its place, and if both are destroyed, the corridor would still be clear. In other words, send the irresistible force against the immovable object. Admiral Kempf is placed in command by von Lohengram, and the fleet sets out. Meanwhile, on the Alliance capital of Hainessen, Yang Wen Li has been called to a tribunal over his actions in the course of putting down the Civil War. Not because he committed any war crimes, but because Job Trunicht, the current president of the Alliance, considers Wen Li to be a political wireful and is choosing to take him out rather than leave him as the most successful commander in the Alliance military. This leaves Wen Li stuck on the capital when the attack is launched. Who isn't on the capital, on the other hand, is the rest of Yang's staff commanded by Dusty Attenborough and Yang's ward, Julian Mintz. Thus, they are, end up launching a defense of the fortress based on the fact that the Empire doesn't know that Yang isn't there, so if they fake it just well enough, they can hold out until Admiral Yang gets back. It works. They're not only able to keep the Imperial forces on the ropes, but also destroy Gaysburg Fortress and deal a critical blow to the attacking fleet. This leads brings us to the fourth book, which requires me to get into a side of the conflict that I've generally glossed over. Fazan. Fazan is, in short, a country of war profiteers. While the economic systems of the Empire and the Alliance are mostly mercantilist, only engaging, engaging in trade internally, when it comes to external trade with, between the two, because neither country recognizes the other as a sovereign country and they're both at war with each other, Anyone on one side who wants goods from the other has to go through the middleman of Fazan. Consequently, if the war were for some reason to end, either through conquest or a sudden outbreak of peace, the Golden Goose would stop laying, as customers and suppliers in the Empire and Alliance could just cut out the middleman. Further, the Church of Terra, or the Terraist Church, for maximum symbolism, has a vested interest in keeping the war going and taking steps through Fazan to do this. They want Earth, which is currently a bombed-out husk of a world, to return to the center of galactic power, and to do that, they basically need the other major galactic powers to utterly annihilate themselves so that they can sweep in and be the knight in shining armor to come to the galaxy's emotional rescue. In other words, the Church of Terra's plan is internet nice guyism applied to galactic politics. Fazan's position is helped by the fact that outside of the Isolon Corridor, the only other easy way from the Empire to the Alliance is through the Fizan corridors. Consequently, when the head of Fizan, or Landshare, has the bright idea to keep the war going by uh, persuading Imperial emigres from the Civil War to kidnap the Child Emperor from the capital and take them to Hynesen through Fizan, they end up providing Reinhardt the perfect excuse to take a page from history and invade Fizan to get an another clear route to the Alliance. The majority of the book focuses on the political machinations leading up to this kidnapping attempt and the build-up to the invasion of Fizan. We do get one military engagement, with Reinhardt sending Admiral von Royenthal to attack Iserlone as a fate while they take Fizan, but we end up spending more time on Fizan, both with members of the government and with Julian, who has been sent to Fizan as a diplomatic attaché. Yang Wen Li has much less time in this book than Julian and Reinhardt do. Ultimately, this book is something of a build-up. We've been waiting through the past few books for one more match between Reinhardt and Yang. In each of their previous two matchups, Yang was never in a strong position, always inheriting command of a, uh, exi existing battle, which has turned into a rout, and having to manage the withdrawal. 
Now, technically, in all those situations, Yang won. As he brought back whatever remaining forces were under his command intact. But he's never had a chance to take on Reinhardt in equal terms. But this book sets up the next engagement really well. Because of this, there's no real sense of a resolution here. We're not at a new status quo, or a potential new status quo, as things were at the end of books two and three. We're at something of a cliffhanger, and we're left to see how it turns out in the next book. So, I'll read the next book in the series when it comes out, because I want to see how, what happens. In the meantime, post your thoughts in the comments below, and for those of you who are reading along with the books as they come out, or haven't seen, or who have seen the show, please refrain from spoilers in the comments past book four. So, if you're interested in picking up the book, there will be links on where you can get it from Amazon and write stuff in the show notes. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like this video and subscribe to the channel to be notified when new videos come out. If there's something in particular you'd like to see me cover or just want to get your name in the credits or otherwise help the show, please support my Patreon. Once again, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.